Hello everybody, Flamin' Shark back with another video and today we're going to be jumping into the penultimate episode of the first season of Arcane. That's right, it's going to be season one, episode eight, Oil and Water. And as we know, oil and water do not mix. Um, this is probably referring to two characters or it might be referring to Piltover and the Undercity. Uh, if it's referring to two characters, it could be Vi and Jinx, it could be Victor and Jace maybe having their kind of falling out. I don't know about that one. Um, God, it could be a lot of things, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not really entirely sure uh, if it is referring to like a pair of characters, but it also could just be Piltover in the Undercity and is symbolic of just everything going to total shit. One, because of Jinx's stunt, two, because Jinx and by proxy Silco have the gemstone and three because just just everything is fucked just in general uh, there's also Victor which is a thing that is gonna go somewhere I'm sure because he's not dead um without any I have no doubt that he is not dead so that, that we're gonna see where the Victor plot goes but um a lot of t fun stuff that's going on I'm super excited to see where the show goes I obviously just recorded episode seven right before this I literally just recorded episode seven filled up my water, and I'm back for episode 8. Obviously, you guys will have a fair break in between, but trying to record the acts all together, uh, I did it with Act 2. Um, obviously, not exactly Act 1, because I didn't know exactly what I was getting into, so I recorded episode 1, and then I 2 and 3 I recorded together. But, you know, but 4 to 6 I recorded together, and I'm recording 7 to 9 together. So this is the second of the three episodes of the finale, essentially, of Arcane. So I'm very excited for this. Last episode was great. Um, I talked about it quite a bit in the previous reaction, and I'm super stoked for this. I'm super excited to see what comes of Jinx, because she kind of got blown up, but she's obviously not going to be dead, because it's fucking Jinx. Um, she... Oh, wait, no, yeah, no, I take that back. She didn't get the gemstone. What the fuck? I literally just said she got the gemstone, but, um... Yeah, the last we saw, Echo tossed it over to Kate and Vi. So Kate and Vi have it, actually. What the fuck am I talking about? Ignore me. Holy shit, I'm stupid. Uh, yeah, Jinx just got blown up. So actually, maybe it's going to be okay. I mean, unless Piltover, unless Piltover like sees the Jinx thing, it's too much of an act of aggression. They're pressured. They, they have to do it. I don't know. Maybe this could be avoided, but knowing knowing how the narrative of the show is built, I highly doubt it. I imagine things are going to be in chaos by the end of this episode, if not even earlier than that. Um, and I imagine through whatever set of circumstances that we do get Jinx versus Vi at some point in episode 9. So there's also that, because um, it does seem like that is going to actually happen before the end of the uh, season. And I still am not entirely sure if Jinx and Vi's story is supposed to be like season one or the whole show or what. Um, it's kind of a weird, it could even be a kind of almost like yes and no to both because it's, it's an expansive show that covers a lot of characters and a lot of stuff. And obviously this show, we know, we know there's going to be at least one more season. They can go into a lot of like other stuff like and a lot of other are um i was about to say arcane characters well i guess they would be but league of legends characters so there's a lot of stuff that they could do that um would be really interesting so i'm very curious to see how they play this but uh jinx is amazing i simp you guys know i, I can't i can't resist trick crazy chicks i she's so but it's it but like to be fair i do want to mention she's so fucking good like she's so well written holy fuck like it's crazy so i like i i have to mention like she's crazy so which makes her like infinitely hotter than if she wasn't crazy even though she's hot anyways but she's like twenty thousand times hotter because she's fucking insane but it's honestly really sad um and this whole show is kind of sad purely because it kind of does revolve around jinx who is probably the most tragic character in this show um it's really sad and i mean to be fair because like vi is like really sad but vi has um kate now which is really cool and to be fair jinx has silco but something tells me i don't know how long much longer she's gonna have silco i'm kind of worried that where this might go is silco might die in the last episode and that might just completely break jinx 
Um, it would be interesting if Jinx became like the queen of the Undercity. I don't know if that is where I don't I don't really think that's where it's going. But I I, I kind of just thought of like yeah, there's I, I feel like Silco is definitely a contender for people that could die by the end of this. But if they could like f firmly implant Jinx as the proper villain, quote unquote. But I don't know if they're gonna go in that direction because they've she has been so. They have done everything in their power to build up sympathy for her from a narrative perspective for the viewer, where it's like, even though she's, you know, certainly not the greatest person by any stretch, you're meant to sympathize with her all the same. And that would really solidify her as the most tragic character in this fucking show, though, if that's where they're going. God, that could be. Holy fuck. I don't think, oh God, I, I can't even say confidently I don't think that's going to happen. I don't even fucking know. So anyways... You guys know the rules. Um, assuming we don't have to pause for any, like, freakouts or immediate discussion, we'll watch the whole episode with no cuts, and then we'll cut for dis uh, extra discussion after. But who knows how it goes. So anyways, let's just jump into Season 1, Episode 8 of Arcane, Oil and Water, in 3, 2, 1, and play. Instead of Oil and Water, it should be Blood and Shimmer, and it's just Victor, like nearly dying for 40 minutes and then he becomes like a super bing that would be really funny that would that's the episode that clearly we all want all right here we go is that young echo what is oh that's young mel what the fuck i can't tell if this is a flashback or a dream Probably a flashback, but... Um... When I was ten, your grandfather brought me to the aftermath of the Battle of Hildenar. He offered me a gold coin for every blade I retrieved from the Fallen. Said we needed the steel. But I knew it was a lie. He wanted me to know death. Mm. Kino says war is a failure of statecraft. Your brother thinks he can talk his way out of anything. He fancies himself a fox among the wolves, but mark me, child. If you want to last in this world, you must learn to be both the fox and the wolf. Hmm. You have to know when it's a time for peace. Import crystal chandeliers. Advisors will enter here, but the regent will have her own secret entrance. She should have a kind, fat face. Clever to charm her subjects, but pliable so we can mold her perhaps she could be my daughter you'd give me a throne i will give you the world child if you prove you can take it interesting uh what should we do with her jesus She won't make trouble for us. Strip her of her possessions and send her to the far colonies. She's a symbol of the old regime. <laughs> kill her now. Ish. Only one must die. Let her live and you may need to kill thousands. We can show the people we are merciful. Is she the girl that's with her all the time? Never mind! I didn't think so, but good oh, God. No mercy. <gasps> Yo, what the hell? Did you paint that? Oh, jeez. Did you even know you painted that? Or did you very intentionally paint that? Also, her hair looks really cool like that. Holy fucking Christ. Meanwhile, with the maze. Will you be okay? I'll be right back. Okay. Jinx. Yeah, look at how worried he is.
Is she trying to get back to the bridge? <laughs> Got their gun. Well, she's going to do everything in her power to kill you, Silco. There's no way. Oh, God. There's no way she's dead, obviously. But she almost died. But, and even still, she did what she had to do to get, to get what they needed. Loyal to the end. Well, we're not the end, but... At least for now. I'm really wondering if Bai's gonna kill Silco. That's gotta be it, right? Bai's gonna kill Silco. And then we're gonna get Bai versus Jinx. Because that's gotta be it. That's gotta be where this is going. That's my prediction now, the more I think about it. It's gotta be Vi kills Silco and then Jinx and Vi go at it. Good god. Not quite I wouldn't say a massacre, but that's pretty fucked Sir, up. Secure the area. Jesus. To escort you back into the city. <laughs> Sir? Good god. You alright? See a throw up? <laughs> yep. She's seen it before. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The fox or the wolf? She's ready to be the wolf. Are you breaking into Kate's house? What is this? And how would you even know where she lives unless she told you? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. That makes Who lives sense. Here? Another counselor friend of yours? Uh, 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 Caitlin! Uh, we were so worried. Thank goodness you're safe. And you found a stray. This is Vi. She's from the Undercity. So I see. <laughs> Could we have a word, Caitlin? Sure. Yeah. I live here, actually. I'm kind of a rich girl. Um, yeah, Cupcake is actually a better nickname than you, you have thought, Vi. to the council. Speak to the council. You understand you've broken several laws. She was doing what she thought was right. Sure. I'll take responsibility. You're a counselor's daughter. Your actions reflect on the entire body. My actions? Uh, you know what else reflects on the council? It's citizens living on the streets, being poisoned, having to choose between a kingpin who wants to exploit them and a government that doesn't give a shit. Uh, Caitlin. Yeah, it's like, language, young lady. I'm sure our daughter could use some rest after her adventures. I mean, she is an enforcer. She is a cop, or, or kind of. I'll schedule is, an audience. Isn't hard to tell. Thank you. You and your friend can address the council yourselves. I'd suggest you prepare accordingly. Interesting. Jinx, or, oh, God damn it. Caitlin and Vi are gonna... Appear before the council. You've been working hard. Oh no. Oh god. Their injuries are severe. You think I can't see that? I believe I can save her. But the process would be demanding. Oh no. Sometimes death is a mercy. She can take it. 
And before I begin, I must know. How are you prepared to lose her? <coughs> Jinx. 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 Yep. She won't die, Doctor. She's too strong. She can't. He love. He really does love you. He really is your father. God, this is so good. I'm, I'm so glad that for your own sanity. <laughs> oh yeah, because she's gonna be screaming like a mad woman. Yeah. I too once had a daughter. Yeah, because he, she's gonna. Are we gonna get? Oh, we're not, Are we gonna get to see it or not? Are we gonna see Jinx screaming like a mad woman? She's gonna be so crazy. She can't even more crazy. Oh my God, she's Smith always in taking guests. This is gonna. This problem. is gonna be what sets her the rest of the way. I thought I might bend you here. There's like a you know, sword. When I ask my mates what circles up to, your name is first out of their mouths. Sevika is out in the harbor. Oh, Sevika paid the knucklehead. Sevika, you're a scary lady. Get to your point. You run the tight ship, don't you? Except it's not your ship. It's his. And Jinx's. Is. This is your plan? Undermine Silco by making a half-ass play of my ego? <laughs> Gotta hand it to you, Finn. Every time I think you can't get dumber, you do. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah. She's loyal. Well, let's be plain then. He's slipping. The Undercity's devolved into chaos. And somehow I get the feeling he isn't up there balancing book shits. Jinx gets a whim. Suddenly his spine's made of jelly. And here you are, shoveling his shit. Ego is one thing. Brain's another. Hmm. He's not stupid, though, but he does have a heart, believe it or you not. You aren't the only one dissatisfied with his performance. Mm. There's bigger fish than Silco. Something to think about, that's for sure. And there's the logo. Are you gonna see her face? Yeah, buddy. Hello. The uh, freaking Amazonist. And look at these freaking soldiers. Hello. You didn't have to come out to meet me. What are you doing here, Mother? Can I not visit? I've heard stories of Piltover's hospitality. <laughs> you didn't sail halfway across the continent to sample the local cuisine. It's been over a decade, Mel, since you banished me. Such drama. I sent you here to oversee our family's interests and grow yourself. Which you have. You mm -hmm. said, perhaps your sentimentality will be more at home with those soft-spined idealists overseas. <coughs> Nice. You have your father's memory. Don't try to ingratiate yourself with me. Yeah. No. Or that. That she's a daddy's girl. Great design, though. My mom. Your brother's gone. What happened? He crossed the wrong man. I was distracted. Oh, That's shit. a mistake I can't take back. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. She wants, she realized the importance. Your case, Talus, has turned his eye to Hextech weaponry. I knew it. War is coming. You've let the problems of your undercity fester too long. Piltover isn't like Noxus. War isn't our first and every recourse. I sponsored Hextech to protect the city, not burn it to the ground. It's not conjecture. It's a fact. Weapons can't be unmade, and they are always used. That is true, at least once. Right decisions. Because nobody believes the power hands. until they see it at least we'll once. See. Miss Medardo. What the yes. fuck? Is that Victor? Wait, what the- It's for me, dear. Oh, okay. That, I was gonna say, that fucking looked like Victor. Like a fucking young Victor. I'm off to sample the local cuisine. EW! Oh, Jesus! Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I bet you are. That literally looked like we'll a young Victor. present our case to the council tonight. 
You did all this yourself? Without even going down there? I thought Powder could get obsessed. <laughs> what happened to her? It's not your fault. Yeah. When my parents were still alive, me and Powder used to share a bed like this. Except maybe half the size. Sure. I mean, you guys would have been really more. little. We pretended to be bigger and bigger monsters. Huh. So she would say, I'm a slug monster with venom for ooze. And I would say, well, I'm a slug eating crap with razor spikes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'd, I'd get carried away and she'd get yeah. scared. Huh. I didn't want her to start crying and wake my parents up, so... Nice. I pretended to chase my own monsters away. Huh. I'd say... No monster's gonna get you when I'm here. Then a real monster showed up. And you weren't there? And I just ran away. I left her. I mean, that's not... Well... It is and isn't what happens. You did, but you also were trying. Good God, good God, good God, good God, they are showing it. And of course, you're seeing even more hallucinations. so crazy and this is without this I can't even imagine what we're about to see oh god oh god the procedure's done Now the question, the new question. God, actually, because you'll just get worse. Oh. Yeah, you get to see what the Undercity's really like over here. You get to understand things a bit better when you actually see things like this. Oh, ingenious. The hoverboard. Those blades seem improperly pitched. You're wrong. It's designed for the fissures. The air is denser. Oh. Are you all right, lad? Yeah, I'm fine. I just sprained my ankle. Are you Counselor Heimerdinger? X. It's former. Just Heimerdinger. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What are you doing on this side of the river? I wanted to offer my assistance to the citizens of the Undercity, but 
It seems I'm unwelcome. <laughs> what is it? We're having the exact same day. <laughs> nice. That looks like more than a sprain. You need medical attention. I have to get home. It isn't safe for me here. I don't know how I'm gonna get down there with my leg busted and... Well... You're holding my ride. <laughs> Gotta love the luxury, right? What in the world? Do they teach military history at your academy, Mr. Tallis? It's, um, Counselor Tallis. And I'm not sure. The Alorian general, Sonam Palak, used to find ways to meet his enemies blindfolded. He said a man's mind hides behind his body. Somehow I doubt he ever tried this. You're Mel's mom. Among other things. Squeeze, child. You won't break it. Yeah, I'm tough. I do have other matters, so if you'll excuse the me. The threat of the Undercity is real. Your leadership is impotent. <laughs> we may not be Noxus, but Piltover isn't as helpless as you think. Who said anything about Piltover? The Council is the problem. The mind hiding behind the body. Navigating huh. your current crisis requires expertise you lack. Do you know what the success rate for senior academy inventors is? Three percent. We're no strangers mm. to failure. Sure. What makes this the city of progress is that yep. we keep trying until we get it right. So thank you for your advice, Mrs. Medarda. But I have a city to run. Wait. Oh, and she just comes out completely naked. Jesus. I see why this province and my daughter have fallen for you. You have the passion of youth. I have experience. I want you to succeed here, Jace. To grace the world with Hextech. But if you don't accept certain realities, I fear you'll end up like General Parlek. Slaughtered with your eyes closed. Ha! <laughs> oh, that was a really cool play on where Three that story was going. Have said they intend to delay shipments until fall to give things time to cool off. We have greater concerns than a dip in profits. Thinking about The sheriff Jinx. betrayed us. Not we need better information. Exactly. We need to act before anyone else gets killed. Perhaps Marcus was operating independently. What could anyone in the Undercity offer him that he didn't have up here? It's not what they offered him. It's what he had to lose. Counselors, my daughter has a unique insight into our situation. Thank you. Counselors, this is Vi. She was born in the Undercity. Even though we failed her in countless ways, sure. she risked everything to show me what life is really like down there. People are starving, sick, ravaged by Shimmer. Yeah. They live in constant fear of the coordinated efforts of violent crime lords. Sure. One man leads these efforts, Silco. We've done the investigations of Silco. They yielded no such level of organization. Yep. And who led these investigations? Marcus. What does this Silco even want from us? He believes the Undercity should be independent. He calls it the Nation of Zorn. Yep. What about these? Do you know who made them? No. Well, uh... Her name is Jinx. This Jinx has the gemstone. Then we have to go in by force. That could trigger war. There are good people down there. <laughs> But there's two. Yeah, that's Even the problem, right? There's pain. always good and bad Ancient. people everywhere. We have Hextech. What happened to you? We've been talking about talking for weeks now. They're still cleaning the blood off the bridge. When do we say enough is enough? Jace, you don't know war. I do. It must be our last resort. There may be a diplomatic solution. Well, it's... She was right. Yep. Yep. She's the one they listen to. You want to negotiate with him? It may be the only way to avoid further bloodshed. This is insane. Did you learn nothing? You Holy shit, Maya's gonna push talk him. to him. He hates you. Everything you stand for. He will never back down. Yep. This is another please, city person Please talking. escort them out. Forget it. I remember where your fancy damn door is. Yep. She made her she made her case. Said what she had to say. 
<laughs> and she's like, I kind of like her. <laughs> she's got Wait. some spunk. Where are you going? I don't know. Back where I came from? Seems like that's what everyone up here wants. I can fix this. You can't. This is how things are, how they've always been. I sure. was so stupid to think it could change. There must be something else we can do. Some other way. We'll make a new plan. We have to try. We tried, okay? It wasn't enough. Top side and bottom, oil and water. That's all there is. Oil and water, top and bottom. Oh, okay, us. it was built over in the other city. Oh. Oh. Oil and water. Oh! It wasn't meant to be. Jesus. You have to sing that. And of course it's raining. Cupcake. Go back to that big, shiny house of yours and just... Forget, forget me. about me, yep. Okay. I knew she, yep. Oh, she's not. Oh, she's not gonna forget about you. Oh, God, I swear to fuck if this is... How... Okay, he can walk. Oh, Jesus. That is creepy looking, but... Yep. Did you guys start running? Yep. Oh, don't trip. Yeah, it's been so long since he's walked or run normally. What are you gonna do now? Victor, Where are you going with this? I've been working on a private project for a couple of weeks now. Uh, no. Where's this going? He's just gonna do it to more of his body. She about to scream. This is gonna hit her accidentally. Like, what's about to happen? Something's about to happen. Victor, I was hoping you might uh, take a look at something I've been working on. He's ready to do it to the rest Victor, of his body. I was in Aww. This girl's like about to die or something. Or... Is she gonna interrupt it or something? Oh no. Oh jeez. gonna happen to her too? Like, what's this gonna do? Oh, Jesus! Oh, my God! And he's gonna be fully fine, because, you know, sacrifice a human in the process, right? Holy fuck. Well, that's tragic. This guy? No. Yep. No. It, it can't. It can't. Jesus. And now it's complete, I bet. Oh, God, it's, it's alive. Yeah, it's becoming more and more like the, 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 the arcane version, the original version. Meanwhile, Time to make hex tech weapons, I suppose. Yep. What the fuck? You want to make Silco pay for what he's done? I could have you arrested. You guys really like to bandy that threat around. <laughs> yeah, you it's ever kind been of our to No. So you just wave an arm, have someone dragged off, don't bother to find out what it does to someone being stuffed in a stone box for weeks or months or even years? 
Yeah. I want to make Silco pay. I want in. There is no in. You heard the council. Fuck the council. <laughs> you said you were tired of doing nothing. That's the only sensible thing that came out of anyone's mouth tonight. She's he's not a vigilante. No. You're a victim. Her weapon. This so people notice you when you raise your hand in the boardroom. <laughs> we built them for mining the fissures. Someone close to me had a pair of these. You're the first person Caitlin looked for when we made it to Topside. Yep. Of everyone up here, you're the one she trusted to do yep. something. What do you want me to do? Arrest him? Silco controls the Undercity with Shimmer. Shut down his supply, and it's only a matter of time before his own people turn on him. Mm. And how do we do that? Take out his manufacturing facilities. Hit him hard and fast before he can react. Holy shit, they're gonna do this? They're gonna do this on the down low? So, we gotta do it. And she's people? got. Wow. And she's got her weapons. She's got her freaking gauntlets of freaking power. Whatever the fuck they're probably called. They probably have some stupid name, I bet. Holy shit! <laughs> He's got a big ass hammer. We're gonna take out all the all the shimmer production facilities. What the fuck did that do? Oh, that could alert him. Or it activates the freaking special defense! Oh, Jesus. Oh, Silco had a, had a backup plan, it seems. I think it's time for you to, to get it. It's time for, time for Jace. You gotta show us your new uh, axe hammer thing. Jesus. God damn. All right, Chase, here we go. Yep. Yep. Let's get it. Oh, here comes my the bay. Yep. Holy shit. Let's do it. Yeah. That was cool. Oh man. Nice. Love to see my, my kicking some ass. Jesus. Damn, there you go, Jace. Oh. Oh, you get a you shall not pass there. That was nice. Vibe punching the shit out of bitches. Yep. What in the world? Oh my god, it's a laser beam. Oh, jeez. That's gotta be like a special ability type thing in the game. Holy fuck. Build a kid. 
Into the shimmer he goes, or just dead? Oh yeah, into the shimmer, or... JESUS! Not into the shimmer he goes, but into the dead zone. Oh, fuck. That's just the beginnings of the casualties of war, but they've seen what you can do. And suddenly begins the legend of Jace as something more than just a scientist. And there's Kate. A lot of water symbolism with like rain and now showers. She crying again. Not that she was before, but bleeding. Oh jeez. to be. Oil and water. Episode fucking ends right there. Oh my god, I guess it only makes sense. Dude, they didn't let us see Jinx that entire episode. Oh good god, episode 9, I'm so terrified. I can't, this is... Like, I mean, the end of Monster, I was pretty terrified for the end of Monster, but... There's not a lot of exam- I was pretty terrified, I guess, for the end of Invincible. That was a, not too long ago at this point. Um, but this is up there for the most terrified I've been for, like, a season finale or a, uh, a, uh, like, end of the series or anything like that in a while. I am so scared. The fact that they've held off on showing Jinx just further makes me, like, I'm so scared. Is she- like, how fucking crazy could she be at this point? And for us to not see her and to build that up for episode 9? Good god. And that's so poetic, too, that of course she was in the shower thinking about Vi. And here comes, here comes little sis to, uh... I'm assuming to kidnap her and use her as bait to get to Vi, but... I mean... I don't know, we're going into the finale, I mean, who knows? I, I wouldn't be surprised if a really big character died. I would fucking really be upset and sad if it was Kate. But, who knows, good lord. Shoutouts to all these people, though, that worked on this show. I'm actually going to turn this down a lot, but shout out to all these people that worked on this show, because this show is just tremendous. Like, what a fucking, what a fucking production. Yeah. What a fucking production this show has been. Jesus Christ. Oh my God, what a show. What a freaking show. 
Whoo, baby! We are here for the aftermath, the post game for episode eight of Arcane. We have one episode left. Next time will be the season finale reaction. I am horrified and excited as hell to watch that, but we have a fair bit to talk about with this one, Oil and Water. It was referring to top side, bottom side, Piltover and the Undercity, Vi and Kate. Not the pair of characters. I said it was. there's a good chance it's referring to a pair of characters. Didn't really consider that as a possibility, but it makes a lot of sense with how the episode went. And now here we are, heading into the finale, and it's terrifying. Um, we'll obviously talk about the end, and I mean, I'll probably save that more, I guess, for my predict. I guess my pregame for episode nine. But um, we had a we had a big cliffhanger at the end of this episode, unsurprisingly, with the uh, season finale in the next episode. But um, there was a lot that happened. Um, Jace and Vi, of all people, have have connected, and the two of them have uh, have agreed to go on the offensive and are trying to take out um, Silco's chain of production. They're trying to go after the Shimmer and everything, um, his Shimmer production. And it's really, it, it is a smart plan, but I, I, I get the feeling that it's not going to go so well, especially again when uh, Vi find, you know, Vi's a big part of it. And of course, when she finds out that Jinx has in mo all likelihood kidnapped Kate, that's going to set up the classic, it's the classic, um, what's it called? It's the classic, uh, damsel in distress scenario, except, um, I mean, it even makes sense. Cause I mean, <laughs> between the two, Vi is certainly the more, I don't want to say masculine per se, but you know what I mean? The more, you put it however you want, but she's, she's, yeah, she's the brawl. I, I, I honestly don't even know the best way to put it, but you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Although, don't be surprised when Kate's actually on top when they're having sex, though. So, you know, you never know. Honestly, I could easily see that. Um, but, uh, good God. Good God. What is there to say? Jesus Christ. Uh, there was also a fair bit of nudity in this episode, which, um, you know, obviously no directly shown nudity that's not quite that <laughs> type of show. Um, it's pretty violent you know it's we have a little bit of swearing and stuff but it's not they're not showing like tits and stuff uh but uh it's there nevertheless there was symbolically quite a bit of nudity between um we got kate nudity. kate was in the shower and freaking mel's mom was in the bath and so there was a lot of stuff like that in this episode which um the mel scene with uh or, sorry uh, the the jace scene with mel's mom was quite uh something else so i i did really enjoy that um there was so much i'm trying to even like where do i even start with all this there was so much like goaded stuff in this in this set to talk about um uh, Jinx has been saved, but we have no idea what the hell Jinx is like at this point. They purposely hid Jinx from us and set it up to where we will um, obviously be seeing plenty of her in episode 9. But, uh, I mean, really tremendous stuff. And I'm so excited for them to uh, show us the uh, show us w what else we're going to get here. I'm, like, really so excited for the next uh, few episodes I'm um, sorry, a few, we only have one, what the fuck? I'm so excited for how it all comes together in the season finale, but, um, God, there was so much. I mean, I mean, the going back to the actual title of the episode, uh, Vi and Kate went to the council, obviously, and had their whole deal with the council, which was really interesting. Um, and, it, you know, they, they managed to make strides, but they didn't, it seemed like they they couldn't quite convince them. But uh, Vi would later show up at Jace's uh, workshop or whatever and convince him of a plan to uh, do this. Vi, Vi was able to convince Jace and the two of them, along with a bunch of enforcers, went and decided, hey, we're going to we're going to take out Silco's means of production. We're going to fuck up their shimmer plants and we're going to we're going to do this and we're really going to, um, you know, go on the offensive in a way that they could hopefully, you know, take out Silco 
prevent war and then hopefully make things better for the Undercity, you know, a kind of best case scenario that obviously is not going to occur. Now, the way that they've written this, it seems like the direction is going is we're going to be, the cliffhanger is going to be war. We're going to be left for a state of war at the end of the next episode. And I'm very interested how that's all going to play out. But it looks like instead of getting war here, we're going to be in a position where the next time Arcane comes back, which um, I don't know about specifics, but from my understanding, it will most likely be like 2023. Uh, but whenever Arcane comes back, we will be in war. Which sounds great to me. I mean, this has been a great uh, prelude to that this first season. But um, it's really amazing. It really is. There's so much that I want to talk about. But it's just like, I don't even... There's just so much. Like, that's the thing. There's almost like too much happens in an episode of Arcane. It's like long enough to where it's like there's so much that I want to talk about. But um, I just don't even know. Like, God... Um, the stuff with Victor was really sad because his assistant girl died because she walked in at the wrong time. She was at the wrong place at the wrong time and walked in on him doing his weird things to try and few the, further uh, kind of transmute his body almost, so to speak, with the uh, with the shimmer and the and the uh, the fucking uh, the twenty sided die, as I like to call it. Um, and uh, that was pretty sus. But um, the seed, I suppose you could say, but. Um, that was really sad, but it also seemed like what it seemed like it did is it only further powered the semi organic cube of doom, the seed, and further it towards what uh, Hyman Dingers warned them about uh, when he first saw it. Um, it, it it's, it's on that arc now that it sucked up a human soul, essentially sucked up a human being, turned them to dust. Um, it's really interesting, and I'm really curious to see. Uh, how that further develops, given that that's obviously going to have a huge uh, relevance to the story, and I'm curious how that that how its role is going to play in all of this. So I'm very excited to see where that thing goes. And there's so much other stuff that I'm super excited to see where so much of it goes. You know, Victor's whole situation does this shy Victor off from continuing it, or does this make it to where he has to finish? You know, uh, mutating his body to. Um, preserve himself because it's like well now i've lost her so i i can't be all in vain right so i have to like fix myself and continue to you know potentially in his mind save lives through you know his very you know his work and all that fun stuff um it's really interesting and um it's interesting that we have echo and heimendinger together it's such a weird pair but i love it um there's just a lot of fun stuff going around but definitely the main stuff the stuff with jinx uh, and, and now Jinx is, uh, presumably kidnapped. She's, you know, it doesn't really make sense for her to, I mean, she could, but it doesn't really make sense for her to just straight up kill Kate. She's going to kidnap Kate in all likelihood, and that's going to be the bait to get Vi out there. Now, she might want to kill Kate. I mean, that certainly, honestly, sounds on brand, but she also was going to want to get Vi there. And everything's set up. I mean, Vi has the, the gauntlets, which that was something that we've been waiting for. I mean, she has... That's the thing, right? Like, the scenario in the OP, it's it's Vi with the gauntlets, and it's Jinx with her Gatling gun, and they're they're fighting each other. And that's that final shot, and that's what I've been... At one point, I thought this was going to happen at the end of the second act, and then I was like, "Oh, they're going to be they're going to be together by by the for the by the end." And things have not worked out like that. That was far too optimistic to even think of because they they if anything, it's the opposite. We're near the end, and it looks like they're properly going to be enemies, and it's going to be it's going to be something else. And I feel like, like I said. If it doesn't go to a draw, I feel like in some way, shape, or form, Jinx has got to find a way to win because Vi has essentially always beat her, and that's, like, the narrative, right? But we also don't know even what Jinx is like. Like, what the fuck is, are we going to see from Jinx in Episode 9 now that she's her life was shit saved and she got jacked, she got a bunch of shimmer into her, so now she's, like, shimmerfied and all this bullshit and... You know, we, we don't really know what she's like and, you know, what matters is that Silco saved, uh, you know, Silco is like she wanted no matter what to save her and she was saved. Uh, but you, you really saw to the strongest degree, you saw just how much Silco loved Jinx. Like, yes, 
part of why she has to survive, a huge part of why she has to survive is because not only Silco needed, like, for their goals, for Silco's goals, she's necessary, but also it's twofold. That's part of why he loves her, but it's also he loves her because she and him, she, she sees him as, no, he sees her as a younger version of himself that's gone through the same bullshit in large part related to Xander in both cases, but a younger version of himself that's gone through the same bullshit and just all the tribulations. And this, it goes full circle back to earlier in the series when like the, 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 the drowning metaphors and the references to Xander and Silco's past and how she was like, you know, be reborn is jinx. But it goes back to the fact that he sees her as a younger version of him, which is why he believes in her. And he believes that she can take it no matter how much it hurts. He believes in Jinx's strength. And that is like the weird thing about Silco. That, and that, again, part of the reason I really like Silco more and more is he truly believes in Jinx. And yes, there's a manipulative element to it. It's, it's not just, it's not pure love by any stretch, but he absolutely does love her. And even more than that, he truly believes in Jinx. He is... Potentially at this point, potentially the one person who truly believes in Jinx. Because we can argue whether or not Vi, Vi believed in her, but I don't know if Vi does anymore. And even if she still does deep down, will she believe in her by the end of this episode? And the other scary thing is, will Silco be alive by the end of this episode? I am very concerned as to whether or not Silco survives this episode. And... But I, I will say, I think his odds have gone up because I was kind of thinking like Silco getting killed by Vi could be the final straw that sends her completely over the edge. But she might already be completely over the edge. The way that they had to save her life, that might have been enough to completely send her into actual just pure insane insanity. Uh, and we're going to find out in the next episode, which is incredibly high, but I can't begin to explain just how excited I am for episode nine. That is going to be an experience that uh, I'm going to record very soon and probably not all over, but I, oh God, this show is just phenomenal. And um, as with all of you, uh, you guys probably will all agree with this sentiment. I'm very sad that there is only one episode left, and I'm sure for all of you who've watched the show, a lot of you were very sad that there was only nine episodes. Even if the episodes were quite long, like they're fairly long. They're like, you know, 35, 40 minute, you know, whatever. 35 minutes, I guess. It, more, give or take, kind of around that range for the most part. I'm hoping episode nine is really long, but uh, I haven't checked and I don't plan to check until it's time to go. But uh, I uh, am really hoping that episode nine is really long because I want, I, I, like, I would love a one hour episode here because, you know, I want as much content as possible. It's probably going to be a normal length, like 35 ish minute episode, which is perfectly fine. But if this is like an extra long episode, oh, that would be so nut. But, um, this show is fantastic. What more is there to say? This was a great episode, but I feel like I actually had a little less to say than normal, which. I don't know if that, uh, I think I've been talking for like almost 15 minutes on the episode, so that's still a lot, but I feel like it's not as bad as some of them, so um, yeah, that's going to do it for my reaction and review of episode 8 of Arcane. We have one more to go. I'm terrified, but I'm also so excited. Again, I'm recording this, to, it's 2 in the morning on January 14th, so it's a little, it's you know, about a week-ish, a week, two weeks, whatever, somewhere like that, but a week and a half, some somewhere like that. It's a little bit before the first episode goes up, so I have no idea how well the series has been going, but for all of you guys, I just want to thank you guys so much for checking out my Arcane reactions and uh, enjoying them so much. You know, I'll probably go on a, a longer spiel about this in the, fina in the finale, or rather, after I, I, I finish the last episode, but uh, still, like, thank you guys so much for watching the videos. Obviously, I have a bunch of other shit on the channel you guys can check out or maybe have if you're new to the channel. But for those of you who've been around, you guys know the drill. Um, anyways, Flamin' Shark. Oh, yeah. Links down below in the description. Discord, Patreon, that fun stuff. But anyways, uh, Flamin' Shark signing out. Hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastical day. And I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.